Welcome back to the channel, and if you haven't heard already, I am traveling out to Sand Hollow to the Matt's Off-Road Off-Road Games. I will have the wrecker on display so you can come out and look at it. I will also be doing the wrecker pulls at the Off-Road Games. So they will have a couple things stuck in the sand, I believe a car and maybe a truck and a trailer. We'll see if this wrecker can pull them out. I have about a week until the Off-Road Games, so let's take a look at what I've been up to and get this thing finished up. A lot of work has been done on this truck since the last time you saw it, but I'm in a hurry. I actually just got back from Sand Hollow visiting Matt's Off-Road. And I have a lot to do on this truck, so I haven't been able to film everything. But now we have a 12K Badlands winch on the front. The fair lead is powder coated in a rat rod rust color. And then I sprayed some cream spray paint over it to kind of try to match the bumper a little bit. The grill had to be modified just slightly to clear the winch. But I think this is still tastefully done without compromising the look of the wrecker. Coming over to the side, I finally got the inserts to convert these wheels to work like bead locks. The way that I have these wheels and tires configured, these are not beadlock wheels. But with the use of these rings, I can turn the wheels that I have into double beadlocks. The way that this works is you disassemble the wheel into the two halves again, and then you put this ring in between, and when you clamp it down, it ends up clamping the bead of the tire to both sides of the wheel. And then I'll be able to air down much further than I can currently. And since this wrecker is going to be in front of so many people, I decided I needed a new logo. I've been using the previous logo since the very first video of this channel, and I thought it was time for a change. So I've created this logo and stuck it on the side of the truck. On the inside, I don't know if I pointed it out before, but there is a small first aid kit up there. And then under the seat, I mounted an ARB air compressor so that I can air the wheels back up. And then here in the back for extra storage, I got these waterproof front runner storage boxes. These are stackable and more importantly, they have this little slot right here so that I can take my ratchet strap up and over and hold them securely. This way I can haul all the things I'm going to need during the off-road games back here and not have to clutter the cab with them. I have one last big project I need to tackle before I am ready to go out to Utah and that is dealing with these instruments. The only instrument that is original is the speedometer which does not work. The fuel gauge also does not work, even though it has a new sender in it. My oil pressure and water temperature do work, but these are not the original gauges. And then I do have a working ammeter here. Since this one doesn't work and it won't be accurate anyways because of the size of tires I have, and since the other gauges are not original, I'm going to replace all of them. And I'm really excited with what I'm going to put in here instead. So it's just four quarter turn fasteners and this panel will pop out and then I can remove it from the vehicle. I do have the kill switch off so it is safe to pull this out. Need to remove all the wiring, all the cables. There will be a pipe for the oil pressure and a water temp which need to be pulled out. But I'll get this undone and then take it over to the bench where we can install the new instruments. And this is what I'm going to be putting in. These gauges are from Speed Hut. These look as close as possible to the originals. This is actually their Humvee kit. But every military vehicle going back a long ways uses the same sizes for the gauges. So these Humvee gauges will fit just fine in here. On the back, I just need to connect all the reds, blacks, and whites together. The speedometer has this GPS receiver, so it does not matter what size tires I'm running. It will always be accurate. It won't take long to put this in and wire it up. It's just one yellow wire per sender for the oil, water, and fuel. This truck had an ammeter in it, and on one side of the ammeter, you connect the battery. On the other side, you connect the generator and all of the things that need to have power. And since I'm going to be using a voltmeter now, I've installed this little bus bar and connected all of the ammeter wires to it. Now I have a good place to draw and run the 12 volt power through everything. And it comes with this nice plastic cap to keep it from shorting against anything. The power and grounds are hooked up to all of the gauges. The voltmeter is working and the fuel gauge is working. 
I'm inside the building right now, otherwise the speedometer would be picking up a signal and we would see something displayed there. If I turn on the lights, let me turn the light off. Okay, now you can see better. This is a normal gauge, the backlit gauge. And I have the bright indicator working. There is also turn signal indicators there, but I'm not going to hook those up at this time. So the only thing left to do now is run my two sender wires for the water temp and the oil pressure. The one thing I didn't know about these gauges when I ordered them is that they do not come with senders because these are supposed to be fitted to a Humvee. So you're already supposed to have your senders in place. So I did order a water and oil pressure senders for a Humvee and I'll need to get those on and wire it up. The Humvee water temp sender ended up fitting perfectly in the water pump right there. And then the Humvee oil pressure sender had to have an adapter put on to come out from the block because it is pretty big, but it's sitting right there. Once I run a wire from those two in through the firewall, I should be done with my gauge installation. Okay, let's take a look. I think I have everything wired up. Let's turn the backlight on. So we can see our volts are working, our fuel gauge is working. I'm inside, so I'm not going to get a satellite right now. We'll start the engine. Oil pressure is working. I'll have to take it outside and let it warm up before we can see if the water temp works and then see if the speedometer works, but looks good. I have the truck outside now and I did put some fuel in it and the gauge did go up. So I think that's working. Water temp is coming up and the speedometer has some satellites in it now. Let's pull forward, make sure that works. Yep, speedometer's working. I did put on one of those suction cup rear view mirrors. Looks like we're doing 40 miles per hour now. I think that's a good cruising speed in this truck. Now that everything's up to operating temperature, it looks like the water is about 180 degrees, which is right where it should be. I think the wrecker is ready for the off-road games now. Even though I have a week to go, I still have a lot of other things I need to get done. So if you want to stop by the Matt's Off-Road Off-Road Games and find my wrecker and come by and say hi. And of course, if you want to see more with this off-road wrecker, comment below and click subscribe.